everyone. I'm Sean from The Velvet Attic and I'd like to welcome you back and I'm so excited to be here with you um, as we launch one of our new products. I'm delighted to be announcing this today. The paper we have come out with is exquisite. Um, it's easy to use, it's versatile. These designs are exclusive to The Velvet Attic and to our participating stockists, Velvet Attic stockists. Um, we've already received st our stock and there's a lot more coming, which is very exciting and new designs. So I wanted to just show you and introduce you to all um, the designs we've got going at the moment. And I'm actually gonna show you how to apply it on a set of drawers. So let me get going with the pictures first and the designs because that's about the most exciting thing and the sizes. You're going to love all these sizes. So we have big ones. <laughs> I'm going to try and show you, I'm using this drawer here to show you the sizing of the biggest sheet. And this one here is our 900 by 600 millimeters, so 90 by 60 centimeters. It's bigger than our standard furniture posters, totally different material fabric, not um, your standard paper you need to decoupage, almost like Soviet decoupaging, but with a much better quality. Very different to our silk paper, so nothing alike to that. Um, they work in a similar way applying, but they're not the same product. So, welcome to the introduction of our chiffon paper. This is our chiffon paper. It's light, it's airy, the colors are very intense, printed beautifully in high resolution. And the first design I have here is our 1907 poppies with lovely scripts, a crown, as you can see, and beautiful red poppies with a butterfly. Now, the reason I'm putting it over the drawer is number one, it's gonna hold it up for you because I'll be working on the drawers here for you and showing you how to apply these. Um, so my first thing to say to you guys is that this drawer has been prepped. It's a pine drawer and it's been prepped with two coats of our Velvet Attic Vintage Chalk Paint Chantilly Lace White. I've applied it with a soft synthetic nylon brush, a flat brush. Um, I allowed each coat to dry and I did not add much water at all because I find if you do that with pine your, your um, grain can swell a bit and then it won't actually work as nicely. So I went straight with paint. Um, obviously it's going to suck in the first coat and then I allowed that to dry and I came back and I did the second coat. Now that white behind is going to make your colours pop off the surface. And I'm very excited about that because when you see me put it over the white, and if you have a look here, because I've got a, a black tablecloth, and you can see how you lose your color over dark colors. And you can see how you create your luminosity because of the white underneath. So this is 1907 Poppies, one of our first designs. Um, this is the 900 by 600 millimeter. So let me move on. I just want to show you and move through these quickly. I know my videos are never short. It's probably because I've got lots to share and say. <laughs> this design here is the one you're going to actually see me working on the drawers with. Uh, let me put it that way. So this here is our Roubaix Iris design. Beautiful pair of irises and buds over an old ephemera invoice. It's absolutely stunning. And I'm going to be doing this on a pedestal of three drawers. Um, and we're going to work the picture right through the three drawers so you can actually see how to do it. And I'll tell you everything I'm doing and the tricks and the trade and everything. So this is our Roubaix Iris, also 900 by 600. Here. Yeah. And then another view is just the most beautiful. It's magnifique, simple and there. The most beautiful mint aqua with apricot peach 
roses, chrysanthemums, um, you can see some roses there, carnations. I'm very excited about this. It's beautiful. And you know, in our range, we have a color called Shalimar, um, which will work with this minty aqua color too beautifully. Um, so you'll love that. We also have a color called Fleur, which is our peach pink, which can also complement. And those two can work beautifully together. So this is Magnifique. Very large flowers, and very excited about that. This one <laughs> you're going to love because I'm going to do another set of another video. It might be the same video, it might be a different, we'll see. But meet our new Lapin Bunny by Royal Appointment. That's the name of our design by Royal Appointment. He's a beautiful bunny. As you can see, lots of beautiful acanthus scrolls here, script, crowns, <laughs> beautiful um, borders and gabling and oh, I don't think you can, I, I just absolutely love him. And I think anybody that's doing the furniture like we're all doing at the moment and revamping and chalk painting and carrying on oh, bunnies are just everything crowns are just everything there's vintage french it's still gorgeous it's lovely so this is our by royal appointment bunny also 600 by 900 sheet i'll pull it across you can see it's very big our next design is jardin de fleur vintage basically our vintage flower garden Designed over a beautiful pale green with script in the background. You can see tulips, roses, poppies, my favorite, bees. I love bees. <laughs> and we survive because of bees. But I do love bees, especially when their bums hang out the flowers. Very cute. So you can actually see how stunning, oh, Dylan, we drop him, how stunning that looks. How the colors show up on this white, just too beautifully. So, Le Jardin de Fleur Vintage. That's this design. Design by me, by Sean, the Velvet Attic. Copyright designs. Okay, this is stunning. This is our majestic garden. I thought I'd bring one in with a lot of contrasting because I do love it. So, our majestic garden. I put it over a, it's not a solid black background, almost like a chalkboard. And I enhanced the colors in the, um, the flowers. So you get a lot of contrast happening there. And they just pop off too beautifully. Um, I've also put another bee. <laughs> so we got bees a lot. So this can be put down 90 by 60 centimeters onto drawers. Um, you can put it on cupboards. You can put it on wardrobes. Uh, walls, tabletops, um, it's it's unlimited really. And you can cut out from them. The paper's sturdy enough that you can actually sit and cut it out if you really want to. Okay, maybe not this, but maybe something like the poppies or the irises. And you just want to use them coming up. You can cut them out with the greatest of So really, really beautiful, majestic garden. And then just something different, which I will do a follow-up video on. I hope you heard me there, I turned away from the mic. I will do another video on this. So I'm introducing you to Carnival de Venice. Carnival of Venice. We have a beautiful lady going to the carnival with her mask, scrolls, chandeliers, court jesters, masks there, stunning mask, and of course, gorgeous Italian script from the operas. So I'm very excited about this. I will do a follow-up video on this and show you how you can actually use the white with the, mon the monochromatic prints and what you can do with them, some variety, some creative ideas using our products. So that's one that'll come soon, but it's in stock already, but I'm saying that video will come soon and then you can learn from it, okay. 900 by 600, as you can see. But I think the beauty in our new 
the font papers is we have a variety of sizes. We have the big 900 by 600s. We have A2 sizing, I'm going to show you here. This is the A2 sizing. So remember that's double your A3. There's A2 of the poppies and A2 of the irises. A2 of magnifique and of course by royal appointment our bunny in A2. So I'm just showing you all the sizing so you can see the variety. I'll put some pictures up so you can actually see them next to each other. So these are our A2s. These are very affordable uh, papers that you can use. Um, they're not going to break your pocket and they are going to be so easy for you once you know how to use them. show you. And then of course we go into the A3s. So we got our A3s and we've got A4s. You can see there's our A3, there's our A4. Okay, A3 is a double of the A4, so you know. A3 Iris, Magnifique, Bunny, Upside Down, sorry, there we go. And the Vintage Garden, and oops, lots of contrast in that. And then the white monochromatic as well. And the A4s and the A3s, I think, just lend so perfectly to smaller surfaces. You know, not everybody's redoing furniture. This is um, a time when we're seeing a lot of our craft market um, joining and combining with our DIY markets. Um, so we have crafters, we have DIYers, all just creating at the moment. And I think we have to, <laughs> in the situation and the lockdowns we are, we're going to paint for the apocalypse. But the small ones are beautiful. They're beautiful for tea boxes, trays, uh, jewelry boxes, tissue boxes, um, all these little gadgety things, book boxes, uh, even birdhouses, those kind of things. There's so much. And we have a fantastic range of stencils to complement this. So you, you can put your picture down and you can purchase stencils with crowns on or scripts on or other bunnies or scrolls or something to complement this. Um, we have a lot of florals. We have other typography ephemera stencils as well. Really beautifully made that you can do and create a lot of variety on your piece. So um, it's absolutely endless. So those are the sizes of our new Velvet Attic Chiffon paper. A4s, A3s, A2s and 90 by 60 centimeters. So they are rather large. <laughs> so let's move on from this. I'm going to um, in between because it's very difficult with the um, with the camera on the tripod. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to insert a picture of the drawers as I've prepped them because I've put two coats of white on all the drawers and down the sides um, so I'll just put a picture in the, the video so you can have a look at that and then I'm going to start showing you how I'm going to apply the paper to the surfaces now this piece as I go I haven't actually totally decided well I'm going to do this exactly and that exactly I'm going to put the paper down I'm going to build from there so because there's a possibility I may glaze or I may stencil or I may wash color or anything, do something different, float, shade, whatever. Um, I'm going to actually apply our chiffon papers with our Velvet Attic Vintage Paper Glue, which I'm going to go get for you. So welcome back, I'm back with you. Um, I just went to, I'm going to have to move and grab and then I will just um, obviously fade out and in so you can see. 
This is the product I'll be applying our chiffon paper to our painted pedestal drawers with. It's our Velvet Attic Vintage Glue, our paper glue. This is the 250 ml bottle. It's a clear glue. <clears throat> it's long. It's got a, sense, a bit of retarder in it, so you've got time to work with it. Um, it's not going to dry excessively fast and then you can't do anything with it. Um, it's very easy to use. It's non-toxic. You can use your fingers in it. You'll be fine. Um, I use this oh, endlessly and it allows you to do other techniques on top and afterwards if you use this because it actually has a matte finish on the glue. So this is what I will be applying the chiffon paper to the surface. And then once I've finished everything, I will obviously seal with our vintage varnish, our water-based polyurethane varnish that is non-yellowing. Um, it's durable, it's uh, heat resistant, scuff resistant, it's just stronger than standard craft varnish. And um, I, I'm a matte fan, I love to use matte, but we do sell it in satins and the most stunning gloss as well. Um, so you really have a choice. Water-based, non-toxic, easy to use, easy to apply. Both of these I will apply the product on with a soft synthetic nylon flat brush. Not a hardware brush, I find they don't actually um, work as well. Um, and that's why I use them for base coating so there's no streaking through my paint. Um, I actually work it in it to the wood and then smooth it. Um, and then it's it's perfect for applying. There's no ridges, there's no streaks through it, nothing. And the same thing with my varnishes and glues. So this is what I'll be using to seal at the end. This is what I'm going to be using um, to apply the chiffon paper now. Okay, so what I did was I took my drawers out and obviously I marked my top drawer, middle drawer, bottom drawer of it to make sure these. This one is um, on runners. So I've taken it out of the runners or off the runners. Um, I will do some painting and stenciling in here later. Um, the main priority I wanted to show was actually how to get this paper on and what I did with it. So I decided that we have these beveled edges here and I don't know if you've seen my other drawers I did with the Scott's Roses furniture poster many moons ago. Um, I'm going to follow the same principle I did there but obviously with our chiffon paper. Um, and I'm going to basically follow the pattern through the three drawers, um, allowing it to go over the top and the bottom bevel. So what I did was I measured. And the first thing I measured was the width. Um, you can't, uh, it's hard to see, but you'll actually see that you have a straight line before it bevels on the side here. So I measured from there straight across and I cut the full sheet of the iris um, to that width in one piece. Then I took a tape measure and I measured from the end of the bevel through to this end of the bevel. And I measured each draw individually and that's very important because as much as we'd like to think everything's made perfectly, drawers are often not the same size. So do yourself a favor and save yourself a lot of hassle and measure every draw and then you can add it up. So of course I measured the draw and um, at the top of the top draw there's a, a five centimeter edge of wood like a lip that comes out which I've included into the pattern um, which I'll put on there and then it'll flow into my first draw and so forth down into the second and third. So once I've measured that I went and I marked on the back you can actually see um, when you've got it this vibrant, that's the front. This is a little bit more dull. You'll see it when you have the paper in front of you. I don't know if the camera is actually showing it as easily, um, but I think, yes, you can. You can see the vibrancy as I turn it. So you can see by the width, there's my width. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is obviously I want to go over my bevel there and there. Okay, that's the plan. So that's what we're going to do. This drawer here is the top drawer. Okay, so in other words, I'm now going to take the top part of my pattern. That was the bottom. This is for the center drawer. Okay, 
and this is the one that's going on the top. Okay, most important part to this is that when I apply it, I start on the edge of my bevel. It's not the end of the world. Sorry, let me just realign that. It's not the end of the world if we go a little bit over there. The pattern's still going to flow. The most important thing is that we line up here before it folds over and we keep our patterns in line. Okay, so this is where I'm going to now start with the design and obviously over the bevel. I will turn it and I will move it around in a sec. Okay, let me move those out the way so we can make some space. Those wet. I'm finishing off a bottle of the glue, so it's on one of our old labels, so it shows you how far it actually goes. Um, I'm going to work with it. Sometimes it's a little bit like a jelly almost. I don't know if you can see in there. See? Checking on the laptop, yeah. You see, it's almost like a jelly, and it's lovely. Um, it doesn't smell bad, <laughs> it's non toxic, and you can just wash it with your hands and water. It's fine. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to use a number 12 of the flat synthetic brushes um, that we sell. This is the number 12. Um, it's basically a soft synthetic brush and it's wonderful for applying um, to surfaces and painting with and varnishing, etc. And we've got different sizes uh, right from the 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 in this. So you can use it for the smaller pieces. Okay, sorry, I am back. I turned the drawer because I want to be able to see both beveled edges here. That I know I've got enough for both and they're pretty even. Um, otherwise, one's going to have much more than the other and then it, it probably won't flow very nicely. I'm also lining up here and I can feel that I'm just on the edge there, which is great. Okay, so it looks good to go. Now, you can paint the glue here first and then lay your paper down and smooth it with your hands and then work over it with the glue so it goes through the paper. But what I'm going to do is show you basically what I do with serviettes um, because it's easier to actually place it like this and then work on top of it and let the glue soak through and then we know we're perfectly placed. Otherwise we're going to paint and then try and lay it straight while it sticks and lifts and does that make sense? That's how I look at it. So for me, I think it's going to be just a lot more simpler just to do it this way. All right. So the biggest import or most important thing I'd say you need to do here right now is you need to start in your center. Okay. If the paper stretches at all, it'll stretch evenly if you follow this technique. And you can apply this to your serviette decoupaging too. You know, when you separate the three layers, you can apply the same technique here. So you can decoupage serviettes very easily. You can apply it with our silk papers as well. Works beautifully with that. Um, and we have such a range of serviettes to choose from. You're gonna love our website, which is coming. Okay, let's get going. So I'm going to take it. I, I like to dampen my brush first. I'm just using a bucket today. I know you, I often use a brush basin. I'm just gonna blot it. Always dampen your brush first, you won't build up any skins and, you know, thick edges on it. And um, plus it prolongs the life of your brush, which is great. And then I'm just going to get myself some glue, so I'm dabbing it in there. I'm just going to lift it, so you can see I've got quite a lot on there. Because now I need this to soak through the this, this chiffon paper. Right, so we hold our paper down. I'm going to work in the middle, just make like a cross. And I'm going to work backwards and forwards so that it actually starts taking to the surface in there. I know it's not easy to see because there's a sheen, but if I pull in it, you can see it's actually sticking there. Okay, and that's the beauty too. If you put it down and you lift it off the glue, and that's why I love our glues and our paper, <laughs> you can actually replace it and work it again, whereas with serviettes you couldn't do that because then it's going to tear. Our silk papers, 
you can do that up to a point until it gets too wet then it'll start breaking the paper apart these you can work beautifully with so let's get going work outwards from the center you're gonna find you don't get any creases with this paper out from the center don't be shy with your glue please you need glue down okay it's got to soak through your paper here you'll see it better here on this dark patch because you actually see it's getting wet now you can also use some of our bigger brushes the number 26 our biggie he actually can also work he i'm gonna make him a he see he can actually work beautifully so i'm just gonna keep working like this from the middle out Obviously, when I get to the edge of my paper, I will focus on those beveled edges. Right now, I want this to work through the paper. Hogshead brushes, I don't recommend. Um, they're a bit too firm for this process. So stick to your cheap synthetic nylons. This is not an expensive brush. It's a cheap synthetic nylon, not golden tacklons or anything like that, or natural hair. So you can um, afford them and you can buy the different sizes and you can use our fantastic brush cleaner I personally use our brush cleaner that we sell now for over 20 years and it is fantastic it conditions your brushes it looks after them you can use your or clean your most expensive red sable brush in it if you really need to um, it's not going to damage so it's a lot gentler than like hardly brush cleaners in there um, and you only need a drop or two so it goes a long way so I'm gonna keep working just take it all the way to the edge and then we'll work with the bevel I'll show you what to do there get your flat side down first So exciting and please make sure you have numbered your drawers and you don't go and stick your number one picture on your bottom drawer okay <laughs> get up to concentrate a little bit like i said these chiffon velvet attic chiffon papers they're exclusive designs of the velvet attic um that we've been all done and our participating Velvet Attic stockists will be stocking them um, as well. They're going to be fantastic to use in workshop. Um, very easy, very simple. And to be honest with you, if I was going to do something different, like let's say I wasn't going to stencil and I wasn't going to glaze or do stripes or whatever, um, and I just want to put it down, then I'll put it down straight with our varnish. I won't even worry about the glue um, but because I am planning on doing something else I uh, want to use the glue which will allow me to do that okay so I'm just going to now I'm going to use my finger use some glue and I'm just going to work this little edge of this paper down here there we go. So you just need it to, to suck through the paper and it'll go onto the paint and it'll um, attach. You don't need to seal the wood, uh, the paint, with a sealant before you do this. You can go straight on. Whereas a lot of times with, um, I'm going to turn this now, with the uh, water slides and things like that, you need to seal, obviously. Um, but with this, you can go straight over your paint. I'm gonna work this end now. We'll come back to the bevels in a second. Let's just get these flat areas down. And if you do at any stage and you're not sure and you see a bubble you can just go there with your finger and some glue and just work it out it's not going to break the paper 
Um, the only thing I recommend is that you have glue on your finger when you do that. So it doesn't stick to your, to your hand. So if you've got the same medium as what you're applying, it should be fine. So it's a very exciting product to hit our market. Um, it's a, a new product. Um, lots of variety, lots of room for growth, um, lots of versatile surfaces and techniques and things you can do with it and apply it to. And basically, we call it chiffon paper because it is so light and airy, like you but it's paper. Nice there, I just want to, I've got this stitch. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to go back, dipping my finger into the brush there, into the glue, and I'm going to work. Oops, see, there you go, you see, you lots, but you can lift it again. I'm going to just put a little bit more glue here. See how you can just lift and apply it and then work over it? That's why I say it's just it's stunning because you can do so much with it. I'm just going to take the glue and I'm just going to work it. It's all over my hands. And I'm just going to make sure that all the flat area that I worked on, these edges, and that are down. Now I'm going to start on one of the bevels. So I'm actually going to turn this draw now. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'll start you at the bottom. And what I want to do, I'm just going to lift the paper and I'm going to rub some glue along the bevel right up to the paper. And then I'm going to come with glue on my fingers and I'm going to start working it over the curve. Now it's important you don't push it up and make like a bubble here. So you need to make sure you pull your paper over the edge like I'm doing now. Work it down and it's going to go a little bit over this ridge here but I'm not too worried that's going to be fine. I could cut it off later or I could just stick it. You're not going to see it. It's the bottom or the inside of the drawer. Okay, so my biggest thing is just to make sure where you do see, obviously, down all edges, push on, work in a circle pieces. But you know what? It's so flexible, this paper. Um, it just folds over too beautifully, really. Um, and if it's not right, you can just lift it and refold it. Okay, so that's draw number one done. And I'm going to go and do the other two draws and then I shall be back with you. Okay, um, welcome back. I actually wanted to show you something before I do this and then you can actually just watch me apply it. I'll speed it up. But one of the important things you need to do here is obviously make sure that your picture where you're applying it here, it's going to line up my drawers correctly. So we're going to be applying this once again over the bevel. And we have to make sure that when the drawers meet, see if I can actually show you this. So when the drawers meet, the pattern needs to continue. So just make sure, even if you keep your draw there, just to make sure you lined up first, that you can at least uh, carry on. I need to just move it. Make sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to move this slightly away. And I'm going to continue and do what I did before, uh, starting on top and then getting the flat section down and then I'll do the beveled edges and I'll speed it up for you. Okay, so welcome back. You can see the second draw I've worked on. So I'm gonna go get draw number three. 
and um, apply that now, the last piece of it. Let me give you an idea of how they'll look flowing through on the drawer. Um, so we're going to let this dry um, and then obviously I will carry on a bit later with this once it's dried. And um, yeah, I, th I thoroughly enjoyed designing this piece and um, and the poppies and I thought that, you know, I love roses too, don't get me wrong, and then we will have roses. Um, but it was lovely to bring in the iris and the poppy and the other one with the um, roses and tulips and carnations and yeah, it was uh, a nice change as well, so uh, which I think we could do something different in that beautiful flower.